Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Shades of Grey. Uh, excuse the hair, it's still very wet, and I just put some curl gel in it. So as we do this, y'all gonna probably see it like get shorter and uh, <laughs> and uh, dry up a bit. But I, I needed a break from doing hair stuff today and putting it, tying it back and doing all that craziness. So uh, let's go to the Once Upon a Book Club August 2024 box. And yes, we are doing this in October because as you guys have learned from watching my videos, their boxes come late in the month. And I try to read them and my life got crazy. I'll make another video about that because I finally got it back in order. But I was able to finish this book and I got onto a rush because I got the notice that the next book for September was coming. So I had to hurry up and finish up the book. Uh, the book was actually good. I will give it that. It's just that my life was crazy in the process of trying to read it. Read it. Now, typically I like to start going through the gifts first, but because this book is more of a mystery and one of the gifts uh, sort of hints to the end. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna talk about the book first and then get to the gifts. I promise I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible as you, you guys came to see what's in the box. So one thing, the book was the In the Lonely Hours by Shannon Morgan. Uh, so this book follows a mother and a daughter. Uh, the mother is Eddie and uh, E-D-I-E -E, and the, her daughter's name is Neve. A uh, teenage girl, typical, uh, they leave, live in uh, England and she gets a, uh, Eddie gets a notice from a lawyer that her family member has passed away and left her castle. Now, the thing about Eddie is that she never met her biological family. She was given up adoption the day she was born and she never had any contact. So they had done a DNA test. They proved that this was her family. However, she never knew them. She never met them. And the person who passed away wasn't her father, but they were related. So she still doesn't know who her parents are. So they go to this castle in the middle of the night and it's huge, it's absolutely monstrous. And while they're on their way to the castle, uh, Neve starts looking up her phone about it and find out and find out that um, on Halloween, which is so when, uh, that's how it's pronounced in the book. It gives you the pronunciation in the first couple pages that someone in the family dies. And Halloween is coming up, I believe, in a week. How? Eh, but Eddie's intentions is to go to the castle and just set it up to sell it. Like, she's like, I don't want anything from this since I don't know who they are. I don't want to, I don't know who this family is. I just want to sell it because and they, they didn't tell me who my family was. Uh. And then the more and more Neve looks into it, she finds out that not only uh, is it is it this bad luck this cursed family has that every single year on Halloween someone in the family passes away, but also the castle is said to be haunted and there is a missing red diamond somewhere on the property. So Neve's only focus at this point is to find this red diamond. However, as they get into the castle and they start seeing ghosts, Eddie starts becoming more and more curious about her family and finding out who her parents were. Uh, there are several ghosts that haunt the house. There's even one that sort of writes on the wall. Uh, and it's in when Eddie starts to read it, it looks like, okay, this person's actually writing down their diary. And so she starts getting hints. Now the book uh, goes back between the, the ghost's past so you read about the ghosts and what was going on with them. And then they also bring you back to the future, the present tense. And it, it goes back and forth. Now the text does change. So you know when you're in the past and when you're in the future. So this is the past. Everything is in italics. And then when you're in the current, everything's straight up and down. So that's how you know, you know, whether you're in the past or in the present. So in the course of hauntings and all this craziness going on, at one point, Eddie just wants to leave. She's like, I don't I don't care anymore. I just, I'm not gonna find what I want. And then her daughter Neve was like, no, I wanna find this diamond, this humongous red diamond. I wanna, I'd have to find it. 
So you go, you, you learn back and forth. Now the author has a son who has autism. And so she made one of the ghosts have autism as well. And it does get into the practice of ECT, electric uh, convulsion therapy, because sadly that was a technique to try to cure somebody with autism back then. And they pretty much just tortured this guy. And it was, that was a hard part for me to read. Uh, I've learned a lot about stuff like that and how they thought it would fix people. And it rarely ever did. It was just horrible to read that part. That one kind of made me like stop reading for a second and like collect myself because that was a horrible thing to read. But we can't forget that things like that happen. Just because something makes you uncomfortable doesn't mean you should forget it. Uh, it teaches, it helps us learn from the past. Uh, it helps us fix the future. So once I kind of collected myself, I continued to read the book. Uh, I did enjoy the book. It takes a minute to set up. Like most mysteries, it takes a while to set up the mystery and get you in. But once you're in, you're in. Now, let's get to the gifts. And when I get to the part that's a bit of a spoiler, I will warn you guys. So the first gift. Now, this book came with three regular gifts. Now, it does come with the standards. You get your sticker for either your water bottle or your... Uh, uh, I think it's like a poster that you can get and you can put all your stickers on you get your sticker you get your nameplate now the funny thing is that i actually got two so i believe i got someone else's you get a card from the author which is actually very sweet uh inside there is a map of the island because it does take place in scotland now she does write the book as if someone uh, who was Scottish was talking. And so it took me a while to kind of figure out what they were saying, because it's written that way. However, if I just imagine it, imagine it in the voice of like Drew McIntyre, who is a huge pro wrestler, a uh, very proud Scottish man, or Piper Niven, I can then hear it the way it was meant to be <laughs> said and I can understand it. I don't know why I had to visualize either one of those two understand it but once I visualized them it was a lot easier to understand what I was reading uh, but here is the map of the castle when everything is located so it's very cool to have that as a reference and inside you have the interview with the author herself so you can read up on that and that's actually pretty cool and you have discussion questions if you guys get this book I will uh encourage you to go online and talk to other people who read the book and get their opinion on it it's a way to turn this virtual, this book club into more of a virtual space. You can be friends that way. I'm all for that. So to the gifts. So the first gifts, gift comes on page 75. Uh, Eddie's going through a desk drawer, trying to learn about the people who used to live there. And then she finds a photo frame with the photo of an old, old man holding a baby super cute so this is a magnetic frame as you guys know i like to give you guys link links to things like it uh i do have to let you know i am an affiliate so the links that i have for you guys are amazon and i think the other one is easy to target or walmart but i am affiliated affiliated with all three so if you click on it and then you purchase anything i get like a couple cents on the dollar However, if you click on it and you purchase nothing, I think within 24 hours, I get nothing. So I just have to let you know that because of FTC laws. However, so first gift, page 75, is a cute magnetic picture frame. Second gift comes on page 88. Came in this big, huge bag. So it is, and I have to stand up to show you guys this because it is monstrous. It is very, very big. It's very, very large blanket. I'll try to get it all in one frame. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All there. <laughs> Let me get the side this for you guys. So this is 53 inches by, I'm sorry. Yeah, 53 inches by 61 inches. 
uh, is cotton and polyester. It is Eddie's blanket. She gathers a blanket uh, uh, when she's with her daughter. They're starting to experience ghosts for the first time. And so Eddie just uses this to cover herself up. Uh, the instruction on this is wash on gentle cycle with cold water. Do not use bleach or fabric softener. Do not mix with coarse textiles. Hang to dry. So wash cool, uh, gentle, and then just hang up to dry it. I found one uh, kind of the same length and height. It's a dark floor, floor pattern, but that was as close as I can come to this one as possible. The final gift. Now, if you don't want the spoiler for the end, turn it, turn this off now. Uh, as I always say, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. In life, there's black and white with me. You always get a shade of gray, all that. So if you want to not see the last gift, which gives you a hint to the end, turn this off in five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right. The last gift comes on page 304. This is when they find the hiding space for the big red diamond. And then they discover the big red diamond. And it is called the Mandrel Red. And it is a brooch pen. And I thought that was so pretty. Let me take it out the plastic. It says how to use, add a unique touch of style to any outfit. Unscrew the pin crap, stick the pin through the scarf, tie, lapel, or shirt and place the pin cap to secure. So there it is. I thought that was so pretty. Now the one that I did find, I'm so bad at screwing these off. I don't wanna break it. Uh, it's more of a flower on top, like a rose. And so I was able to find, that was the closest thing I could find to this. So page 304. There is a page in here where there's a, a QR code to hear uh, Scottish bagpipes being played. I meant to mark it, but in the midst of preparing for this, I just plumb forgot, and that's just me being a dingbat, which happens more often than I would like to admit, but it does happen. Oh, I yeah, just found it. So this QR code will lead you to some Scottish bag, bagpipe music that comes up in the book. And oh, let's not forget, you got your personalized bookmarker. So that is what you get for In the Lonely Hearts. I will say I give this book probably about an A minus. Took me a minute to get into it, but once I got into it, it was actually pretty cool. So A minus, you got this, you got your brooch pin, your blanket, uh, the picture frame. I'm trying to hold the so you can actually see it but my fingers are twisting as i'm talking the picture frame uh you got the bookmarker <clears throat> book parker nameplate and sticker and the blanket so that is what came in the August 2024, Once Upon a Book Club box. So if you got the box, let me know what you guys thought of the book. And let me know which gift was your favorite. I don't own a brooch pin. I love a good brooch pin. I actually took this blanket to the movies. Super warm, comfy, loved it. And the picture frame, I gotta find someplace magnetic. I don't like putting things on my fridge. It just looks crazy and unorganized. But once I get a whiteboard back here, I'll get one that's magnetic and this will go on it and a family photo will go inside. And that's my plans for everything. I actually use the stuff that comes in these boxes, you guys. <laughs> it's actually, all the stuff has been super useful in my house. They're all getting used at this point. And my cooler's being used by my parents who I'm never gonna see that cooler again. Let's be honest, I'm never seeing it in. So with that being said, in life, there's black and white. But th this girl right here, you will always get one shade of gray. Bye, guys.